Hey guys, welcome back to another questions video. So this question here may seem a little bit daunting at first, but don't worry, I'll walk you through it and we'll break it down so that you'll be able to get those difficult questions right on the real exam. So here we have a patient administered an epoxide reductase inhibitor. 48 hours later, the patient begins to notice pain and erythema over his left leg. Within 24 hours, the lesion progresses to necrotic bully. Labs show a PTT of 30, PT of 29, INR 2.16. Which of the following best describes the underlying pathophysiology of this patient's condition? Okay, so before I answer this question, I'd recommend that you pause the video and give this a try. All right, so let's break down this question. So the first point we have here is that the patient is given an epoxide reductase inhibitor. So on step one, there's only one medication that we know of that has this mechanism of action. And this is warfarin. So this patient was most probably administered warfarin. Now, 48 hours later, the patient noticed pain and erythema over his left leg, which progressed to necrotic bully. Now, immediately, you should be thinking about warfarin-induced skin necrosis. Also, looking at the labs, PTT is normal, PT and INR are elevated, which is in line with warfarin's effects on the coagulation profile. So just a quick reminder, guys, epoxide reductase would, the function of epoxide reductase is to reduce vitamin K to its active form. And when vitamin K is activated, it goes on and carboxylates or activates procoagulant factors and anticoagulant proteins. So basically activates the procoagulant factors. Two, seven, um, nine, and 10. It also activates the anticoagulant protein C and S. All right, so among those proteins, factor seven, and protein C have the shortest half-lives, and the other factors have longer half-lives. This is why the PT is already prolonged, as it reflects the extrinsic pathway, which relies on factor seven. Now, what do I mean by short or long half-life, and why is this important? Well, if you think about it, now we inhibited vitamin K activation, which means that the only activated coagulation factors are the ones in your blood before the administration of warfarin or before the inhibition of epoxide reductase which activates vitamin K. So the issue here is that you will soon run out of active protein C before you run out of the other coagulation factors as it has a shorter half-life compared to the other factors. You're gonna run out of protein C and factor seven, but protein C here is more important. Um, so essentially, in the next few hours or few days, there will be an imbalance between protein C and the other coagulation factors. Since protein C is an anticoagulant and it gets depleted before the procoagulants, now the patient is in a hypercoagulable state, which predisposes them to intravascular microthrombosis, which could occlude the blood vessels supplying the skin and lead to necrosis, as seen here in this patient. Now, the problem with this question is that it's not straightforward. Depletion of protein C is not an answer choice here. So you got to think one step ahead. Now, ask yourself, what is the function of protein C? We know that protein C inhibits factors 8 and 5. And now that there are low protein C levels, factor 8 and 5 are sort of disinhibited. And they'll have increased activity. So factor 5 is not an option here, but factor 8 is an option which makes answer choice E the correct answer. So yeah, guys, this is a definitely a tough question. But as you could see, if you think about everything carefully and follow the correct sequence of events, you could reach the correct answer. So again, this question here is a good example of this. The first thing we saw here was inhibition of epoxide reductase. So ask yourself, what's the function of epoxide reductase? It activates vitamin K. And what's the function of activated vitamin K? It activates procoagulant factors and anticoagulants, like we stated here. 
So the next step here is how did this lead to skin necrosis or put the patient in a hypercoagulable state? Well, the next step would be to think of the half-lives of each of the, um, of, of the coagulation factors in general and protein C and S. So now you reach the conclusion that protein C is depleted before the coagulation factors because it has a shorter half-life which put the patient in a hypercoagulable state. So decreased protein C is not an answer choice here. Again, think one step forward. What's the next step? What's the next... Um, st yeah, think about the function of protein C. Um, it inhibits factors 5 and 8. So now that we no longer have this inhibition, this means we'll have increased activity of factors 5 and 8. Okay, now I'll go. Uh, I'll quickly go over the incorrect answer choices. So answer choice A, um, plasmin is responsible for fibrinolysis or breakdown of clots. So if you have decreased plasmin activity, this would put the patient in a hypercoagulable state, which could predispose them to skin necrosis as seen here. But the issue here is that plasmin is not dependent on epoxide reductase for activation. Same thing with antithrombin 3. It's not dependent on epoxide reductase, so it's not going to get affected. And in case you don't know, antithrombin 3, from the name, it inhibits thrombin. So if you have decreased antithrombin 3 activity, you're, you're going to have increased thrombin activity, and this will put the patient in a hypercoagulable state. Um, answer choice C. This could make you think of HIT or heparin-induced thrombocytopenia, but again, it's not affected by epoxide reductase. Also, the presentation of heparin-induced thrombocytopenia includes purpura, not necrotic bully. Answer choice D. Now, as we said earlier, factor 7 has the shortest half-life, and so it gets depleted very quickly because it's dependent on vitamin K activation. And as we said, vitamin K activation occurs through epoxide reductase. All this would lead to a decrease in factor 7 activity, not an increase. Alright guys, so that's it. I hope you found this video useful. Thank you for watching.